Well, I've been, been asked to help create a video that will be utilized by forest landowners to help them have a general understanding of the process of a timber sale. So they understand what a forester does, how a forester can help them, and how they can use his help and the knowledge of this video to execute a proper timber sale on their property. The first thing you're going to want to look for is a forester. A forester is somebody who has a bachelor's degree in forest resource management, usually with an emphasis in forestry. Uh, there is a list by the New York State DEC cooperating foresters list that you can look at for your region and find cooperating foresters. You can use the Society of American Foresters uh, website to find certified foresters or just by word of mouth. But the main thing is you want to ask for the credentials and make sure the person has a bachelor's degree in forest resource management. The first step in a, a timber sale would be to pick that forester, to meet with that forester uh, at your property, take a cruise through your woodlot and determine um, what your goals and objectives of ownership are so the forester can help you realize those goals and objectives. After you've established your goals and objectives, the next thing you're going to want to do is actually have an agreement with the forester of exactly what he's going to do for you. He's going to, he's going to come up with some ideas on how he can help you meet your goals and objectives. And then with your signature and you're okay on an agreement, he will then go to your woodlot and begin collecting forest data so that he can come up with a proper prescription to help meet your goals and objectives. After the forester has gone to your woodlot, collected data, he's going to go back to his office and he's going to do a stand analysis is what we call it. And he'll run it through some computer programs and come up with multiple marking guides that help him determine what tree should be harvested and help you meet your goals and objectives. After he gets done with the marking guide, he will then the forester will then go back to the field, your woodlot. At that time, he'll have his paint gun with him. He'll have his timber cruising stick with him, tally sheets, and a prism. And what he's going to do is he's going to go back and actually mark the trees that are ready for harvest. Some of the trees will be poor quality wood, intermediate suppressed trees. Some of the trees will be saw timber. He will mark these trees appropriately. He will tally the volumes and species of each tree so that at the end of the day, he can say, I've marked X number of trees. I have X volume of wood ready to sell and I'm ready to come up with what is called a fair market value. Fair market value is a number that a forester derives by utilizing New York State DEC stumpage price reports, in other words, the stumpage value of the species he's marked. He'll also use his own marketing experience knowing what he's got for prices on different timber harvest. He'll combine that with the volumes he tallied in your woodlot and be able to say to you, here is a fair market value for your timber. Here's a value of what you should be able to expect to get for the timber I've marked in your woodlot. That information, the fair market value, the volumes, the species that I've tallied, I will then put in what's called a timber prospectus. A timber prospectus, it lays out the landowner, the location of the wood, uh, any access issues to the property. It also explains all the volumes, all the trees that have been marked and ready for sale and it also gives you maps and all of the bidding specifications. Um, the fact that the buyer will need to have workers' compensation, the buyer will need to have liability insurance. It also gives the date and time of the actual bid opening. So the prospectus is prepared to be sent out to potential bidders. The landowner will also take a look at this prospectus so he knows exactly what is getting sent out to bid. Once the prospectus is done, it'll be sent out to at least three bidders. Usually it's between three and a dozen bidders. These are range from loggers to timber buyers to sawmill owners who will then go and take a look at the wood that you've marked, derive their own value of the timber, and then send a bid that will be opened on a specified date and time.
once the bid opening day comes, um, I'll sit down, I'll open all the bids, record who the bidder was, the amount of money that they bid, and those numbers will all be gone over with the landowner so the landowner sees who bid, how much they bid, and what the high bid was, and what the low bid was, so that the landowner can make an informed decision on which bid they want to take and who will actually be the buyer of their timber. At this time, the landowner has the right to refuse, reject and refuse any and all bids. That's where the fair market value came in. If all the bids are substantially below fair market value, the landowner might choose not to sell that timber at that time and wait for a later date. Once the landowner is determined that he would like to accept one of the bids, the next thing the forester would do is prepare a timber sale agreement. He would notify the buyer that you won the bid and then he would prepare an agreement between the landowner and the buyer. This agreement would be signed by the landowner and notarized. It would then be sent to the buyer so that they could sign and notarize the agreement. The language in the agreement is very straightforward and as a forester who represents the landowner, the language is going to make sure that their goals and objectives are met, their, what they feel the forest should look like in the end as far as smooth skid trails, clean landings, it's going to have their best interest at heart because the forester's job is to take care of the landowner. Once the timber sale agreement has been signed by both sides, the buyer will return a signed copy to the landowner. The entire payment, the bid price, if the bid was $100,000, there will be a check made out to the landowner for $100,000 that accompanies the timber sale agreement. So at that point, the landowner has a timber sale agreement contract with the buyer, has full payment, payment for all of the timber that has been marked, and on top of that, we'll have a performance bond from the buyer in the amount usually between $2,500 and $5,000 to assure proper execution of the contract. The performance bond, again, is protection for the landowner. It makes sure that the buyer is going to execute the contract, follow the contract, leave the land in the stand in good condition when he's done, landings are all cleaned up, skid trails and ruts are all smooth, and any other specific language that's in that agreement, the performance bond guarantees execution of that agreement. If for some reason the buyer doesn't follow through with his end of the agreement, the landowner is then allowed to keep the performance bond and utilize that to hire an outside contractor to do whatever work was missed, such as cleaning up skid trails and landings. Very, very, very seldom is this performance bond needed to be used because the buyer has already spent a substantial amount of money for the standing timber. They really don't want to give up that $5,000 performance bond. So it's just a guarantee that we'll have the contract executed correctly. Once the landowner has uh, full payment, the buyer um, well then, usually in the contract, the buyer will have a year to a year and a half to harvest the timber. The dates are very specific in, in when he can harvest it and how long he has to harvest the timber. When the buyer is ready to harvest the timber, he will contact me, the forester, and give me some notice, usually a week notice, that hey, I'd like to start that particular job uh, next Monday. At that time, I'll call the landowner and let him know we're going to get going on the timber harvest. As a forester, that allows me, if it's the rain season, mud season, early spring when the cambial layer of the trees is soft, it allows me to, to say, no, we're, we're not going to harvest this right now. You're going to have to wait. And the buyer knows that, and he realizes that because that language is in the timber sale agreement. But once the buyer has signified he'd like to start the harvest, and I feel as a forester that the conditions are right, then I would meet with the buyer and his logging contractor first to go over the timber sale agreement maps, understand where the landings are going to be, skid trails, what my expectations of a forester are, which is you know, the residual stand in, in very good condition, very little residual stand damage, no rutting, no working in mud, no working in the rain. But the other reason I'm going to meet with them is I'm going to obtain workers' compensation and liability papers with the landowner named as additional insured at that time so that the landowner is covered. So I've secured those papers. I've met with the logger, I've gone over the job, the agreement, what's expected, and at that time, the contractor working for the buyer will go ahead and start the timber harvest. Once the timber harvest is started, I try to make an appearance on the job every one to two days. 
I meet with the logger, make sure everything's going okay. I then take a walk through the woods to look at the areas that he's harvested to make sure that the residual stand damage is minimal, that skid trails are in good condition, that they're only cutting the correct trees, the trees that are marked, and just so he knows that there is somebody watching over the timber harvest. Once the timber harvest is completed, the logger and I will take a walk through the woods, make sure that everything is up to speed as far as what the timber sale agreement said, as far as skid trails, water bars, roads, bridges, landings, etc. Uh, there'll be no trees leaning up against other trees, no tops uh, 10 feet in the air, broken branches. Um, the job will be cleaned up correctly. At that time, I usually ask the landowner to come out and take a walk with me as a forester and show him, here's the completed job, we're all set. Does, he, does the landowner have any issues that he'd like to address at this time? If the landowner's pleased with the job, I'm pleased with the job, we then turn the performance bond back to the buyer or the logging contractor, whichever put the bond up, and the job is complete. The landowner has met his goals and objectives. He's obtained the highest fair market price for his timber that was available through the bidding process. He has the assurance that the job had oversight from a professional forester that understands the timber industry, understands the logging process, and understands the landowner's goals and objectives. This should assure a future harvest or the ability to meet future goals and objectives of ownership. So to, to, to sum it up, what I, I would hope to have gotten through here is the need for a landowner to hire a forester. Foresters are educated with bachelor's degree in forest resource management. They understand the structure and function of the forest. They understand how to meet the landowner and hear his goals and objectives. They understand how to try to help that landowner meet his goals and objectives. And through a correct timber sale process, the landowner is assured the highest and best price for his timber. He's assured a residual stand that he can be proud of and happy to walk through and utilize and a future harvest down the road. It's always good to contact a forester. Contact a forester in the beginning. Many times I get called after a timber sale has been done or a harvest has been done where a forester wasn't involved and there's really not a lot any of us can do about trees that have already been cut. Um, the initial consultation with a forester usually is minimal to free. The forester wants to meet with you, wants to get to know who you are, and wants to know if he can help you. At that point, if you go ahead and use, utilize the forester's expertise, I'm sure there will be some sort of a fee, but it's minimal compared to what you could lose in a poor timber harvest.